I'd like to start this video with you guys commenting down below with the answer to this question. What were you doing back in 1998? I was only four years old, so I'd barely learned to speak and was probably puking up every couple of hours. It was the year that Google was founded, the International Space Station was launched, and France beat Brazil in the FIFA World Cup final. And would you know it, this thing was the most powerful new car you could buy at the time, the Aston Martin Vantage V600. Nowadays, we think of a Vantage as Aston's lower level sports car, but back in the 90s, this Vantage was seen as the performance version of the rather chunky Virage, the GT Cruiser above the then new DB7 sports car. It wasn't just the fastest Aston ever, it turned out to be the most powerful car you could buy new in 98. The two more powerful cars of the 90s, the McLaren F1 and EB110 SS, had since gone out of production. It was 1999 before customers received the road version of the CLK GTR with its 604 horsepower. So for a brief moment in time, this 600 horsepower brute took the title. So how did Aston create that figure? Well, like everything the company was doing back then, it was simple and done with gusto, but it wasn't the most elegant of methods. This is a 5.3 litre V8 that you'd find in most of the virages of the time, but it is boosted by not just one, but two superchargers, one on each bank of cylinders. That's the kind of stuff you'd find in drag racers, not thoroughbred supercars. It was effective though, boosting the 5.3 unit from 350 horsepower to 550 horsepower initially, resulting in a car called the Vantage V550. It wasn't long before Aston made some upgrades, resulting in the 600 horsepower engine sat in this thing. Before I drive the car, I'd like to thank the sponsors of today's video, Liqui Molly. They provide a whole host of additives, oils, and other lubricants to give your car a new lease of life. Ed China has actually used all of these products on my Monday OST, and I must say, after using this injector cleaner, it has really opened up my engine. So if you're like me, and you've got a car with over 100,000 miles, and you feel like it needs a bit more pep, I thoroughly recommend this stuff. There's a link to this and the other products that Liqui Molly provides in the description below. So what does one of the most powerful cars of the 90s feel like? Well, just as the heavens open, it's time to go out on track. Now, I'm gonna let you guys into a bit of a secret. This thing has been insured today for half a million pounds. And the head of Aston Martin Works, who looks after this car and who delivered it personally to us today, is watching just over there. So it's fair to say I need to be careful with this car. My instructions have been to drive it like Miss Daisy. So we're not gonna be able to feel the full fury of its 600 horsepower and its twin superchargers. But we've got this test track to ourselves and I'll get somewhat of a feeling of what this car is like. The 60 time back in the day was 3.9 seconds and the top speed was bang on 200 miles an hour. And that's despite a curb weight of 2,002 kilograms, just over two tons back in 1998, and it would do 200. Not bad at all. It's fair to say this thing pulled. So in a straight line, this thing does the business, but when you show a corner, things start to fall apart a bit. The suspension is incredibly soft, which is fantastic for when you need to gallivant down to the south of France of an afternoon. But this car, in turn, is notorious for squatting under acceleration. And when you show an apex, it rolls like a double-decker bus made of pudding. Everything feels so brutal and heavy. The clutch is fine, but the actual gear change itself, you really have to put some effort in. It's precise, but you need to change gear from the shoulder. Mm -hmm. 
this car cost £233,000 back in the day. So what did you get for that? Well, you got stocks from GM, you got all the buttons from Ford, you got headlights from an Audi and taillights from a VW, and all the door handles were from Jaguar. But then you just sit back in this amazing leather with that engine rumbling and you just think, I'm in James May's smoking room with a thumping great twin supercharged V8 up front. How could things be any better? I've never sat in a car that feels more British, incredibly comfortable and powerful, and yet fatally flawed and rough in so many areas. You buy that engine and this leather, and the only way for the purchase to make sense is to stay blinkered to everything else. Otherwise, it's just a bit ridiculous. Jeremy Clarkson described the Vantage as a Rolls Royce with attitude, and I can definitely see why. So that's it, the car has been packed away and is heading back to Aston Martin HQ. Thank you so much to Aston for allowing us to film the car, and thank you also to Bister Heritage, it's been an awesome location, the track, the buildings, it's always great to film here. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, you must be a 90s car fan, so I'd like to set you a bit of a challenge. Go onto Instagram and find your favourite performance car from the 90s. Anywhere on Instagram, just search 90 supercar or the one you want to go for, XJ220 F50, and then tag me in it. Because I want to know what cars you guys are into and we can hopefully get them on the channel. This was a dream car of mine, made it on the channel, so I'd like to see what you guys are into and hopefully we can film it someday down the line. I've been Mike and don't forget to subscribe to DriveTribe.